Hello, everyone. Uh, Mike Lemberger. I'm with uh, with Visa, and uh, you know, as a uh, as a startup, like we like to think of ourselves as the original fintech Visa, uh, we think a lot about just how the environment is changing, certainly within the financial world and with fintechs. Uh, we're really proud to be at an event like this with, uh, with many startups that we're sponsoring uh, through our fintech engagements. And I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about startups and incumbents and how they're working together uh, and how they're working against each other uh, and give you some perspective from a company who is kind of in the middle. We're a network. Uh, Visa connects a lot of different things. And so we, um, we have to act like an incumbent in some instances because we have a lot of uh, uh, folks attacking us. And we also uh, have to work like a startup in a sense that we're working with many of them to enable them in the landscape as a network. Um, but I thought I'd kind of share with you to see if you recognize this. Um, this, I took this screenshot yesterday. Uh, this is uh, Craigslist uh, Istanbul. Uh, and in, in the mid-90s, uh, Craigslist started uh, before even uh, the dot-com boom, which was a marketplace. And this was the original marketplace to think about where, um, where we can find things and start to digitize the world. Uh, and what's interesting about this, it's still in existence today. Uh, through the 90s, through the 2000s, it continued to kind of grow. But what actually was the most interesting thing that I think happened within this space is actually the fact that as software got, as software got more advanced, uh, it started eating the world. And you could take a Craigslist page, and you could start to point to all the different things on those page, and you could watch all these different startups start to attack and build and use software and use intelligence to figure out better ways. Better ways to do things for your pets, better ways to travel, better ways to think about raising money, better ways to find jobs. And, in, and this created a whole world for a place for startup and, and ideas to actually come to in a digitized software-based way to start to kind of really continue to grow and, and develop. So it's interesting where things start and how to actually look at this. And this continues. And the amazing part is, is that Craigslist still continues today in its simplest form. Yet a lot of these companies have come. And some of these companies have been successful. I mean, you see an Uber up here, and you see a, a, you know, a Kickstarter up there, an Airbnb. Uh, and others have faded. Uh, and why? And what are those things that actually happen? It's very similar in the fintech space and in financial services the same thing that kind of happened with marketplaces actually happened in the financial institution. Because traditional banks, right, they've got their home page. And they've got all kinds of different things. There's banking, there's, there's loans and credits, there's established this. And what happened? People started to take notice. And they started looking and say, wait, we can do this better. And why should the incumbent, right, give you a customer experience that's inferior in the financial sector? And we can start to build new things across that. So you started to see the whole growth of the fintech space. Well, Visa is a fintech for 60 years. These ones all just looked at a home page of a financial institution, started picking off the areas that were inefficient. And this is how it starts, and this is how it's going to build. And really what it comes down to here is this simple statement. Right? The battle between every startup and incumbent comes down to whether the incumbent gets innovation before the startup gets distribution. Right, so think about that. All the ideas are amazing. And if you looked at all the things that they're trying to pick off, what makes a startup succeed and what makes an incumbent stay an incumbent? And a lot of it comes down to innovation and distribution. And startups can only survive if they actually get the distribution before the incumbents start to actually innovate. And so let, let's look at an example of just kind of how this happens in the financial sector. So if you think about lending, Lending's big business, certainly for banks. It's where banks make a lot of their money. And if you look at a traditional ecosystem of what you actually have here is, is that I'm going to give you, bank, my money, and you're going to give me very little in return, but I have the privilege of being your customer. And that's how they kind of look at this. But if you want to borrow money from me, 18% is the start, right? It goes up from there. But if you look at this and say, this isn't very customer friendly. Why is this working? Look at the spread. Why are banks making all this money? So what happens here in between, this is where the, the, the beauty and the, uh, you know, the, the, the stuff gets created. You find a bunch of people, and you find somebody, and you find out there's a place in the middle where both actually parties are happy. And that's where a startup exists. And that's where you start to look at the marketplaces that they're built and how actually new things come about and you get to the fact that you, know, you, you create new marketplaces and you put threats on either side. 
So banks look at this and say, wait a minute, somebody's going to come eat my lunch. How do I actually, uh, how do I understand that? What do I do for that? How do I actually work as part of that? And those are some of the interesting things that Visa winds up in the middle of, uh, because as we are part of the financial ecosystem, we're connecting a lot of different players and a lot of different pieces within this. So what I thought I would share with you a little bit here to start is, and it's particularly for the startups here, is like, what to expect from an incumbent? If you're a startup or you're somebody who wants to get into the financial services sector or any sector, what's actually happening on the incumbent side? And I can speak to this in a sense that as Visa, we are the incumbent. We are an established company. So I wanted to share with you a few things that happen inside the incumbents that you should be aware of as you kind of grow your business or what you actually do. And if you're here and you're actually an incumbent, you'll probably recognize many of these things and, and your efficiencies across this stuff will actually depend on how you're actually able to cope with new technology and new things within the ecosystem. So what are you looking at? What we're looking at here is five things. Five things that every incumbent is actually, and big large system is actually after, right? Converting legacy systems to new technologies. I can tell you from experience, there's still a lot of mainframe technology out there. There's still a lot of folks that are, are, are working on old versions of Oracle platforms uh, and other components within the system. And, and incumbents are very, very focused on that. Advantage to the startups who actually have embraced and are developing new technology. Understanding and applying regulatory changes, uh, particularly in the financial services industry, but everything now, even in the data movement in the data industry, there's lots and lots of things that are actually moving on. A lot of focus on that, applying that. It will actually weigh a lot of businesses down and, and make them less efficient. Um, becoming a more agile workplace. Every incumbent, every incumbent wants to be work like a startup. They want to use that word agile. They want to be that word agile. They want to have faster cycles. They want to have more release schedules. They want to do all those things. So they're there. And those things are kind of easy to pick off. It's easy to kind of look at that and say, hey, how can we be faster? What can we do more efficiently? They want to retain their customer base and their brand equity. Uh, this, is a, this is a big piece and, and interesting where Visa comes into play because of our brand equity and what we have. But a lot of the financial institutions we work with, they, they really want to maintain brand equity. They don't want customers thinking, like, you're using my actually product, but somebody else's brand equity is actually going towards this. So they do focus a lot of time on brand equity. So I think about that when you think about your own brand and actually what you're doing is, is that how do you compete with some of that where brand equity is there? What is the focus on that? What are customers thinking along those lines? And the other thing is, is that incumbents tend to focus on self-innovation. Um, they typically don't go to their homepage, actually, and look at what they're doing and how they can do it better. They're just very, very insular on, hey, how do we make things work faster? How do we make things work better? A lot of them set up uh, innovation centers in other areas, but a lot of it is self-focused self uh, for what's there. And I will tell you this, Visa, we do a lot of this as well, uh, and we do a lot of looking these ways. I think there's one, one other piece, though, that you know, is a key component to incumbents staying relevant or incumbents kind of uh, uh, continuing to kind of grow and move and actually starting work with the startup community or the new communities that are coming in there with things. And that's this one here. And this is really opening your platforms and sharing your data. Uh, this is something we're very focused on at Visa, uh, which is, and after you know, 55 years of actually having a closed network that was very secure. Uh, five years ago, we opened things up. We started to let new folks in. We started to create new APIs and new SDKs. And you're going to start to see this a lot more in the advanced parts. And actually, we see this as an opening for actually sharing and building and actually working with startups and working with new technology within the space. And this will be a key component for, I think, the future and the future growth of all types of different technology, and particularly within the, in the financial services space and within the fintech community for how things are actually being built and actually what they're doing. So as you kind of look at this, um, those are the areas where if you're looking to kind of be able to get distribution and you're actually looking to be able to kind of compete with some incumbents in certain spaces, this is an area that you may want to look to and find out where is the openings, uh, where are the platforms, where are the areas where we can work in, because you know, as you actually kind of look at this, there are components now where you can work together to actually grow your business and grow the technology across that. And if I kind of look at this, um, this piece here is, whoops, I think I'm going backwards here. Let's go forwards here. 
the outcomes for a startup. If you look at and many of the startups that are out there and some of them we work with, what's a good outcome and how do you actually think about a good outcome? I think a good outcome in this space in many instances is that you merge and get stronger. Uh, what we found, and I, I've lived in the Silicon Valley and I've seen a lot of these, is once you start to get together and you start to realize that you have like areas, that scale piece, the window starts to close very, very quickly within the scale and how you're actually scaling. So merging and getting stronger is a key component. And I think that's a good outcome for any startup uh, to actually be able to do that. Whoop. What's, uh, what's great is to actually get acquired by an incumbent. And I think you know, that's nothing wrong with that. And I think that's actually showing that you're getting recognized, that you're actually knocking on the door, and the, door is get, the, the, the knock is actually getting louder. More and more people are recognizing that. And what we find is, is that incumbents, uh, many like Visa, which we've acquired you know, four companies just this year, we start to put our arms around and saying, hey, who's got that great new technology? How do we actually do that? that's when you get kind of integrated within the platforms. And the best outcome is, uh, is to be the incumbent, uh, to grow your business to a sense where you're actually known in the space uh, to deliver. And those are very rare. Um, I, you know, you, you see them, uh, you, know, you can hear some of those names if you look at the way Alibaba has grown and to develop what it is today. If you look at the way that Facebook has taken WeChat and, and, and uh, as a communication channel uh, that's ubiquitous across the space, um, those things happen. Those are very, very far and few between. And so you don't see a ton of that uh, out there, but that's really the results of what you're kind of looking for. So at Visa, we continue to kind of think about both sides of this sector. Uh, we look at things from a sense of when do we feel like we're the startup, where we're continuing to kind of battle for that space, and when do we want to work with those startups uh, and, and facilitate that. We get a lot of pressure within the space to think about that from the incumbents that are out there. But as a network, uh, it's our job to actually make more and more connections, to leverage our brand equity, to kind of pass that on to the consumer and to the startups, which is why we've spent a lot of time uh, in events like this, um, kind of sharing our thoughts and our knowledge from both sides um, of, of, of the channels in working with and learning uh, how things are actually changing in the financial services sector and actually what's happening there. So with that, I just want to say to Shikilar and uh, Ilsan Slar, uh, to any of the startups out there, and uh, enjoy the show.